So we're going to continue our discussions. Uh, today we're going to talk about securities markets. Last time we talked about mutual funds in the last uh, couple of videos. Mutual funds are a type of security. Uh, we're going to move on to different types of securities and hopefully uh, you'll have an understanding of, um, about the, of the securities markets, the different types of them. Uh, so this, as you can see from uh, the, the, uh, the agenda, that this presentation, uh, we're going to talk about the importance of financial markets, and we're going to talk about primary and secondary markets, the third and fourth markets, some of the major stock market indicators, some market developments in the recent past. So uh, uh, let's talk about the importance of financial markets. The word financial uh, is, uh, uh, the, word, the words financial securities and investments are all synonyms. So financial markets uh, imply similar to importance of securities markets. So the first thing they do is they help companies raise cash that they need. So they can go out there and actually sell a part of their company um, and they will help, it will help them generate cash. It helps uh, uh, channel money from investors to uh, companies. Uh, it, it connects the two groups basically. Uh, it also allows investors to earn a return on the money that they have invested. It helps allocate cash to uh, the, the, the best place, meaning companies or governments where they would actually use them and helps lower the cost of borrowing for the companies and also it increases the, the return for the investors. So there are four types of markets. Um, as I alluded to earlier in the agenda, primary, secondary, the third and fourth. I know the names are very creative. The primary markets are what we call the first markets or the IPOs. So this is where we, uh, the, the companies when they start off, uh, are, are, uh, uh, this is where they issue their shares. So what happens is when a company uh, decides to move from the status of private and they would like to become public or at least a part of their company would like to become public, what they do is they go through IPO. IPO stands for Initial Public Offering and you need lots and lots of specialists to help you go through this process. So what happens is you, do, you draft a document called a prospectus. Um, you meaning, you know, uh, the consultants dra draft this for you. Uh, they help you draft it and you then file it with different exchange commissions. Uh, once you have that document, that uh, the prospectus can help you also with getting the, the, the initial funds that you need for the, the initial public offering. So what happens is you, um, uh, take the help of these specialists, these dealers, um, and what they do is they basically they basically play a role between you, the company, and the uh, the uh, uh, the investors. So they are intermediary companies. They offer you advice. They offer you. Uh, uh, they give you advice on uh, what types of security you should issue, what price you should have, the timing of the sale, and so on. They also coordinate a lot of marketing activities for you, including registering the securities with the governments, issuing prospectus as we discussed earlier, and selling the securities. So it is the first time when you offer these securities to the public through the IPO, the company gets the money. So but what happens is, uh, let's say you come up with a price of $20 per share, the $20, every, every share is worth $20 at the first time, it is the initial time that they are uh, being offered to the public. Any money that is being raised, the, the company gets the money. Beyond that, the investors are trading among themselves. So if the stock price goes up from 20 to, let's say, 30, the investors who had the stock and are selling it to another investor makes, makes the money, not the company. So the company only makes their money the first time they issue shares. And once they've issued those shares, that the investors are free to trade them in different type of market called the secondary market. So right now in the primary market, um, what happens is, as I mentioned, that it is an IPO. It's the first time the, uh, the company is issuing shares. Uh, the issuer receives cash from the investors only during this time. Now the question, the natural question is, how do you come up with a price? 
There are many variables that go into coming up with the price, including the company's reputation, the amount of cash they have, the amount of profits they have made in the recent past, the amount of prospects they have in the future, the, the type of clients, customers they serve, and so on. So the dealers, the, the, this intermediary company that makes a uh, uh, makes a uh, uh, an offer price for the uh, the invest the the company that uh, for you for the customers uh, for the investors and then they can come up with that and they sell that through the IPO. So the IPO process is very cumbersome. It's very confusing to to detail. But as you can see from these two slides, that investment dealers are required for this. This process is called the underwriting process. This underwriting process is, is where the dealers, the, the, uh, the intermediate companies, make their money. So what happens is there are two types of deals. They can be a bought deal or they can be a best efforts basis deal. In a bought deal, the dealer really knows that they are going to take all the risk. See, what happens is a deal uh, this kind of a deal is where the, the dealer buys all the stocks from the company and then they sell it to the public at large. So once they have bought the stocks from the company, it is their risk now to sell it to the public. So let's say, continuing with the previous example, if, they were to, uh, if the price was decided at $20 per share, uh, the intermediate company would probably buy it at $18 because they are buying all of it at once. So the company who's selling the shares is not taking any risk. They buy them at $18 a share, and now they would sell them at $20 a share to the public. <coughs> On the best efforts basis, uh, what happens is the, comp the intermediary company decides not to buy all of the shares at once. What they would do is they would buy and sell as the price, as the investors become available. And they take a, a commission from it, a cut from it, so perhaps 5% or 7%. Uh, it depends on what the negotiation is between the investment dealer and the company that is going through the IPO. So the IPO is a very detailed, very confusing process for a lot of companies. It is a one-time process though. Uh, of course you can have different IPOs at different stages of your uh, life in the company, but usually it is a one-time process and it takes about, a, about six months to a year to go through the entire process. Once you have finished the process, then you move on to the stock markets, which are the secondary markets. So the primary markets uh, are not really the stock market that we hear of, like the TSX or the New York Stock Exchange. Um, those are the, the secondary markets. So the secondary markets, only the investors are trading from each other. So one buys and the other sells. Brokers and advisors are involved. They are definitely involved for, for in the secondary markets and also in the primary markets, as you saw with the dealers and, and, and other types of brokers. But what happens is in the secondary markets, you are not dealing with the seller uh, directly if you're the buyer. You are going through a brokerage firm or someone else in the middle. So those are called investment advisors or investment brokers. And uh, the types of investment markets, I've listed a few types here. As you can see, some of the examples are the TSX, the Montreal Exchange, the Vancouver Stock Exchange, the Alberta Stock Exchange, and so on. So the, the list goes on. TSX is the biggest in Canada. In the recent past, what they have done is the TSX, the Montreal Stock Exchange, uh, have merged their operation together, and they now are calling themselves TMS.